Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today in Watcher of Realms. I am not alone. I am thrilled to be joined by my bucket. Bucket, you mind if I call you Bucket, bro? <laughs> yeah. Go for it, Ash. Thanks for having me, mate. How are you How doing, man? You? It is. A, it, I'm thrilled to have you on because honestly, I, I think I've learned the most about this game from your YouTube channel, your website. I've used your tier list. I'm sure you've seen. I saw you comment on like all my videos because especially my summonings. You know, when I summon a, chan a hero in this game, I just don't even know, like half the time, especially in the very early days, I had no idea what I was pulling. So I'd be like, before I get excited about a hero, I'd be like, let me consult my buckets tier list first. So uh, thrilled oh, to have you, you on. Tell us a little bit about, before we get into, this is gonna be a comprehensive gearing guide, like what stats to put on what all the classes of, of hero in the game. Before that, tell a little bit about yourself, man. I'm curious personally, uh, you know, you've been playing this game, it seems like since the early days. What is your history as a gamer and what made you pick up Watcher of Realms? Yeah, good question. So I started playing Watcher of Realms, a, I think it's nearly a year ago now. Yeah, about a year ago. And it's my history was from Summoner's War. I played that okay. eons ago and I really enjoyed it, but then I kind of took a seat out from Gacha for a long time dabbled a bit i played raid very briefly like a month maybe but i've always been looking for something to get back into the the genre but i wanted something that was different so for me watcher of realms was a pretty good fit for that and when i started uh, the game believe it or not had already been in like a, a closed beta well an open beta but like very restricted regions for two years even before i started Oof. so uh yeah long history but i had no but idea it was that long i knew there was an exclusive like secret beta type thing but i had no yeah. idea it was years that's crazy i think it was mostly russian okay those, those couple years before us it makes sense makes sense uh so then you got have you ever made content on summer's war or anything like that or is this the first time no, you've been at no, cc no, never even touched it uh the cc journey is an interesting one actually hey. so um the whole reason I did it, because I always like in my community, my friends and little private discords, I always make little spreadsheets and stats and stuff. And years ago, I played a game called Might and Magic Elemental Guardians, briefly. It's like another little gacha, right? Okay. And I made a friend there and he decided to make a YouTube channel. And uh, I was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't, I, I wasn't, I was very new to it or I was doing stuff. So I didn't think about it too much and uh, I, we, we lost contact and I found him a year ago. I haven't messaged him. I'm happy for his success from a distance, but he's Vulcan. Vulcan oh, no games, way, Vulcan, the Australian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were talking when he first made his channel all that time ago. So he's a I good dude, friend. man. He's a really good dude. We uh, we yeah, go back to so happy to see it work for him. It's inspiring. You think, you know what? Yeah, if, if you like making content, give it a go. Make some guys, help people out and you never know what happens. So well, really absolutely, man. Well, congrats on your success as well. And I'll have yeah. obviously my buckets YouTube channel and everything and website as well uh, in the description below. Let's get to it, man. I have so many questions for you. I think a good place to start would be in terms of like how to make this video the best for, for my viewers here would be looking at like the five classes, so to speak, of, of heroes in the game. Marksmen, mages, defenders, healers, and fighters. And kind of going uh, through them one at a time and just getting your thoughts on stat prior priorities and basically you know how we're, how we want to optimally be gearing these these heroes be, to get the most out of them right so yeah. i'll use like whoever champion or hero i always say champions man old habits i'm trying to get my terminologies <laughs> away from raid but uh i'll just pick a, a you know it could be any hero obviously but i'll just pick a random one and we can kind of go over them and you can make any commentary that you want in terms of like mid game late game i actually want to start with a general question on dps first i guess we'll start with a mage, Vierna. When something happens, it is always you. And I want to start with like my number one question because nobody I've had on yet has like a really great answer for this. And I know you're the man to help me out here. And that is yeah. in raid, we don't have a uh, rage regen or attack speed. So really yeah. on DPS in this game, no matter the class, we're focused on attack, crit rate, crit damage, rage regen, and attack speed. I don't know which one to prioritize other than I assume crit rate. So tell me in DPS in general, what is the first priority or first couple prior? Any thoughts on any of that? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. It's a good question. And it, yeah, it is quite nuanced with the rage regen and the attack speed. But the general rule of thumb is your attack needs to be the main priority, of course. So yeah, more so in uh, Watcher of Realms and other ones because they have a slightly unusual damage formula. So your attack is going to be negated by the enemy's resistance before you start to get your other modifiers. Oh. Which means that if you have a lower attack value, it gets squashed before it gets the bonuses. 
So you really do need to capitalize on higher attack first before worrying about crit damage or other stuff like that. So I guess that the base fundamental is you want to have, my suggestion typically is aiming for 150 to 200% attack as bonus. So the green value is your bonus attack. I tend to aim for, depending on where you are in the game, of course, but if you're in red gear, you're aiming for around 200%. So double the white value. And if, okay. if you're lower than at least, you know, 100% or 150. So that's the first priority. You really need to get your attack to a, a decent increase. After that, you're going to want to push your crit rate to as close to 100% as you can get. 94.5 is, is fine. That's pretty good. And then after that, you want to pump your crit damage up. And that varies a bit based on content. But I'd say that's the main priorities. Okay. And then as you mentioned, there's attack speed and rage regen. I think Fiona is an interesting one because she doesn't actually benefit from attack speed. Okay. I would say maybe a bit cleaner. <laughs> But yep. it's, it's not super clear, but certain mages don't. Okay, why doesn't she? And how is that apparent from reading her kit, or is that just something that you but know and I don't? <laughs> don't yeah. think it's clear. It used to be, yep. and I went back and forth. So her first ability just down at the bottom, that one. Oh, well, there it goes. There it goes. Attack a speed <laughs> bonus does not affect the base. Well, there it is right in front of my dumb face, right? Okay, <laughs> so obviously read their skills, Ash, would be a great idea. Uh, okay, well, if they don't have that, then any other uh, hero that doesn't have, you know, explicitly saying that, how do I... You know, how do I go from, for example, right? And I think a lot of this comes into play when we talk about their, the bangle, right? Do, yeah. do you, yeah. at first, should we go on DPS? Should we go with crit rate and then eventually upgrade to crit damage? Is that kind of the philosophy that we should have? Yeah, I think um, a lot of people really stray away from crit rate bangles, but I find they're not bad if it allows you to use other pieces because it's, it's unrealistic to assume you're going to be able to put really great sets and pieces on everyone mm -hmm. and a crit rate bangle can really help you get the stats you need and get the because you're fiona for example you, you have a decent amount of attack you have a good amount of crit rate and you're building your crit damage so it's it still it works out pretty good yeah so i think crit rate bangles are good to get you there when you're in the end game sure you won't use a crit rate bangle as much but up to that point it's totally usable and can help a lot Okay, so you were talking about attack speed and you mentioned that it's not ideal, obviously, for Vierna. Let's take Vierna out of the equation. How do I how do I parcel out attack speed versus crit damage? You know, because obviously we're making yeah. choices. You know, do I want a little bit of each? Do I just want to min-max my crit damage as much as possible? Then extra attack speed is always good or... Talk to me a little yeah, bit about I that, yeah. A lot of it will depend on the kind of hero and the kind of content they're used in but in general my rule of thumb is i aim at end game i aim for 120 to 200 attack speed mi minimum on top of everything else but okay. if you're not quite at that point where you're min maxing your gear and you're you can really push for whatever stats you want yeah so with with attack speed i you, de you definitely want to pick some up and okay. ideally you get it in subs on the accessories or on your weapon are the main places you can get it easily as a sub stat okay you can't get it on your armor piece unless it's a ancient piece so ideally pick up one or two pieces with it on as a substat is my recommendation but i would prioritize it lower than attack and crit rate depending on the hero you could probably equalize it with crit damage because you like most games we start with some bonus crit damage right yeah 150 percent so i i think getting some attack speed is good it's like a not to get too <laughs> into the details but of course there's a, a curve to it right yes so the first 120 are the the most beneficial to get so i really recommend trying to pick up that first increment if you can just because it scales so much better than the rest okay uh that was that's perfect no and i love the details keep them coming what about rage regen because it seems like every single good hero every you know a plus the tier on your website hero they have crazy ultimates right so i i feel like intuitively yeah. i want a lot of rage regen right so how does it's how so does good. that yeah how does that kind of play into everything else furthermore like when sh when if ever should i go for rage regen stats you know uh as priority rage regen i've tested it before so i can, I can share something i've not made videos on this so i can Ooh. share it with you and then uh, saves me the time <laughs> exclusive uh, guys get ready <laughs> rage regen has no effect when you're not attacking or receiving damage so if you're if you leave a character in a corner by themselves with 100 percent rage regen it will have no effect on their ambient rage regen gain okay so it only affects the rage regen you gain from dealing damage and taking damage I, i'm pretty sure that's it i'm not sure about healing i think it might do 
but the main thing is you have to be taking or receiving damage. So I've noticed that defenders benefit much more than anyone else from rage regen. Okay. But of course, defenders aren't quite as important to have their ultimates up, so it's kind of a moot point. But in terms of prioritizing it as a stat, it's not the best to prioritize. I've never really had a lot of success prioritizing it because it, you're not going to get a lot of gain from it in the grand scheme of things unless you're optimizing things. So you might shave a second or two seconds off the cooldown of your ultimate effectively. And that's nice and it can help contribute, but unless you are going to use those two seconds, it's not doing a great deal for you. So the main place you see Rage Regen prioritizes in Guild Boss because people are now rage tuning their teams they're having their dolores go at the same time as their arrogance mm -hmm. there's all these kind of little minute details but if you're progressing through the game i don't think rage regen is going to be a very good stat i think it's more of an end game stat to optimize and to tidy things up the only exception i would give would be marry i think marry is a yes, hero that most people out. should have and should use yeah and i think she's good to build because you want to get her ult up as much as possible a couple of seconds can make all the difference. So I would, I do build a rage regen on my Mary. Okay. And that was kind of my next question is obviously the ring is the only uh, gear yeah. piece that you can use it as a primary stat. So I, if I'm understanding correctly, you would only advise people go rage regen as main stat in ring if they are perhaps a defender, uh, but more importantly, kind of mid maxing towards the end game. Uh, or a very specific champion like maybe Amari. Pretty much exclusively a support like Mari. I don't think even Min. I've heard so. Uh, credit to Hassa, a nice gentleman on the Discord, is quite a bit. But he said that there is a, a soft cap to a degree, or almost a hard. Uh, there's some kind of cap around 50% okay. of rage regen. So you're getting a lot less gains after 50%. I haven't tested this myself, so maybe mm -hmm. it's not worth it. To but, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. It's still, yeah. it, it's still useful. It, it, that, that, that's good. Okay. Well, this is great. So let's go through each class at a time now. I feel like I have a basic understanding. Attack. Uh, I remember I saw that I think that Murder Inc. put out a video talking about attack skills so much better in this game than it does in Raid. So I've been yeah. prioritizing attack, as you can probably see here. Just a quick look That's before good. we get into the individual classes where we can start with Marksman, even though Hex is maybe a little bit of a unique case as well. Uh, hmm. But in terms of like looking at this build on Hex, for example, what's the first thing that pops out? Maybe then other than the maybe a lot of crit rate uh, pops out at you as like, OK, you should change this or is it OK for where I am in the game? To me, it looks pretty good for where you are. There's a good amount of attack speed. You've got obviously a little bit too much crit rate, but I'm guessing that's because of the bangle. Yes, yes, and yes. That's, that's and fine. That's and okay. obviously, I intend to, to eventually get crit damage on the on the bangle and then, you know, adjust on. But but to your point, it's hard to get everybody to 100 percent crit rate in the mid game or early mid game, yeah, whatever you want to exactly. call it. Yeah. So I think the only other thing would be hex. Well, actually, it depends where you are. I think where you are, yeah. you'll get a lot of use out of hex for quite a while. Okay. And everyone does. He's a really, really good hero. But I think the main place where you see him used is guild boss. OK. And in guild boss there's a slight difference in priority in gearing than you do see in other content so this is more end game focus so i wouldn't worry too much about this for most people if you're still progressing or you're still mid game but the way the defense formula works guild boss's resistances aren't that high so it's quite easy to overcome them with a good amount of attack and you're going to be using a dolores in pretty much every single guild boss run mm -hmm. and once you get used to your timings you'll have your dolores ulting maybe five or six times a run and that i worked out as a, about 60 percent uptime so you're going to have a massive amount of bonus attack end game that will be around like 9k attack bonus or something and that's a lot of bonus attack going to your team 60 percent of the time your ultimate is going to be up during dolores ult so the bulk of your damage is going to happen while you have all that bonus attack and that's why you see a lot of teams put two crit damage main stats on their dps okay. or guild boss teams so okay. I guess what, what I'm getting at is guild, crit damage becomes a bit more important on guild boss specific heroes because they're going to have so much Dolores boost. Like the that makes sense. Really that makes sense. Uh, okay, let's start with uh, mages. First off, should I be building mages and marksmen any differently in terms of stat priorities at all? I think to a degree. I think it's a, it's a tricky question. It's easy to say, <laughs> no, they're all the same. It's DPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I basically the build them the same for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, I think that you'd build them the same. The main difference would come down to certain heroes like Vienna. You're going to want to just yep. pump as much damage into her as possible and as much attack as possible. Mm -hmm. So I think the heroes that are going to be staple 
in gear raid one the mages you're going to need more attack on them than crit damage because the resistance gets so high in gear raid one so you really do need to amp their attack as much as possible to help you overcome that resistance mainly in the later stages Okay. So I think mages in general, you prioritize attack a bit more than you would on a marks. Okay, sounds good. And this gear, you can see some of these heroes that I just haven't upgraded in a while. But because uh, I feel like you read through what you once you can start getting, you know, red gear in this game, I feel like it's just like this massive change of every everything opens up. And I just hit that. I don't know, maybe like a week ago or something, you know? So I'm still in the process of basically upgrading all of my heroes kind of one at a time. Uh, but that's that's good to know. So basically, we, know, we now know, everybody watching should now know how to build the DPS, essentially. Uh, you know, we talked about all the stats. For the most part, you know, obviously, unlike me with, with Vierna, uh, read their skills and make sure, you know, there's nothing that's going to catch you off guard. But other than that, uh, we know what to prioritize, and that's great. Any notes on DPS? artifacts i mean it's pretty intuitive i feel like artifacts you know like you see exactly what they're doing and where they're going to help you you know but is there any note yeah, that yeah, we should be aware of this is actually a really good artifact the nightmare samsara okay i wouldn't cool. use it on a yeah no it's not bad on vienna <laughs> yeah but i i wouldn't prior to i would put this on a marry normally okay because, because of the rage and, i yeah. don't marry normally in attack speed and rage regen no damage whatsoever just attack speed rage regen and make her tanky enough to not die and I give her the Nightmare Samsara so that she can get her ult up sooner to freeze the enemies, lock them down, and buy more time in Gear Raid 1. I find her really good with that. Okay. But aside from that with artifacts, there is the Ancestral Teachings, which is an epic artifact that grants a whole load of attack. And because it's epic, it's so easy to get a hold of. You can get loads of copies really cheap, really fast. You can upgrade them. I think the maths worked out eight times cheaper to max one Ancestral Teachings versus maxing a Myth artifact. See if you've okay. got any there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to find one. <laughs> there you go. One in the middle. Uh, just down low. Down two. Just above your head. There, there we go. go. There it's we teaching. go. Yep. This one is really, really good, especially for progressing players. Okay. Because it's so easy to max it. It's so cheap on Mithril, which gets becomes a really big blockage later on. But it's the way it's calculated, it is attack on placement. So it's total attack. So it's not like a gear piece giving you 8% attack. This is 8% of your total attack on deployment. Great. So it becomes yeah. a huge bonus. You know, how, just, and, and I don't have uh, Ezra and all, all built out here, uh, but like, is it, should I just go healing effect as much as possible? Is that like all I, that and the main stat that they heal based off of? Yeah, there's, there's three stats that you care about in any healer. It's going to be the healing effect, the attack speed, and then whatever they scale on. So either a attack or HP. But those are going to be the three stats you care about on them. The formula, I, I worked this out with a friend. So the formula for the healing effect is a little bit fiddly. Not great. Uh, no, yeah, it's pretty fiddly. It's, it's, uh, I think it was 5% of the target's max HP with a multiplier based on how your healer, this is a bit too. <laughs> no, please, please. This is good. This is good. Based on whether your healer is single target, tri target, or AoE. AoE being someone like Dolores. They suck. They just, they're really yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah and then your attack multiplied by the healing effect as well and then those two values are combined and then multiplied again by a separate value based again on whether the healer is a single a tri healer or a aoe healer so what it means is that healing effects affects both healing based on the target's max hp as well as the healing scaling on your healing stat so healing effect is very good but that obviously has a curve. And the, the most important easy numbers I can give people is about 100 healing effect works out to about a 70% increase in healing. And 200 healing effect is a 100% increase. So okay. it's like a 25, 30% bonus for that extra 100. So the okay. first 100 healing effect is really beneficial to get. Okay. So I tend to push attack or push HP, then pick up healing effect, ideally aiming towards 100. And then I get a bunch of attack speed because attack speed will really help you get healing out in time. So okay. yeah, my 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 goalstone my my, my my milestones when I'm aiming to gear a healer is around 100 healing effect, and then ideally again around 100 plus attack speed, and then I just pump as much HP or attack as possible. But I think I would say if it's a HP scaling healer, I tend to throw most of that out the window and just go as much HP as I can try to pick up some healing effect and some attack speed but i prioritize heal, uh, hp really heavily 
Okay. Because you use those guys in gear rate two a lot. Okay. So Vortex is just so good. So I focus him real hard on HP. Okay, perfect, perfect. That's uh that's great advice. Let's get into defenders. Uh defenders, I mean intuitively, one would think, and I don't have any good defender built. I'm only using what the gods gave me. And I've not optimized my gear, I would say. So don't judge too hard. But when we talk about defenders, I'm thinking uh tons of hp and defense for the most part right uh is it, is it basic yeah. as that for the most part and, yeah. and what's better hp or defense uh in terms of scalability or anything like that is there certain thresholds we should be aiming for i haven't admit i haven't looked into this a great deal so i yep. can't give a, a as detailed an answer but i've found that as i just pump hp percent all three mains okay and then pick up defense percent in the subs and it works for me okay there is a an interesting nuance to this which might help clarify some things for people with defense so you can only damage in this game can only be reduced to five percent you can't wipe out damage there is no high like you can't eliminate damage down to zero or to you know negligible amounts it will at minimum be five percent damage so if you're getting hit by a really heavy attack and you've gone full defense you're still going to take five percent so I, I think it kind of leans towards HP being a bit better overall, and a lot of skills scale on HP. So okay. personally, I just go HP all the way. I've heard Torador can actually do some pretty good damage. Yeah, but I, I I had the same effect. I was testing him out with crit rate just to see, and he actually can put out like a decent amount. So that was kind of an exception, I guess, for me. But you know, normally you just go all out HP, and I mean, it, pretty pretty basic. You know, I feel like yeah, yeah, I just most people it. probably understand how to build a big tank. You know. <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, how about uh, fighters? So fighters, obviously, you're kind of threading the needle between, you know, damage and maybe being able to take a hit, perhaps in some occasions. So is there anything, you know, other than is it, it talk to me about how you're building a fighter, I guess. I build them ambitiously. I think you kind of have to in this game. So fighters, I think ideally you there are going to be some that you build a bit tankier with a bit more HP. Raph is a good one because at A5, as you have him, at his fifth awakening, he yep. gets some life still. So he's really, really good in campaign and in void rift in some stages tanking. And in those cases, it's nice to pick up HP. But I tend to build pretty much every single DPS with the ideal that they're going to kill the enemy before they die. So I always just channel damage as much as possible. I think if you're progressing through campaign or certain stages gear rate two, you might get some success temporarily swapping them into slightly tankier gear. But overall, I would always build them as a DPS. I think one mistake a lot of beginners make is with a hero called Deimos. He's like okay. a, a werewolf. Yes. He has some oh. scaling on HP, but he's he's still a DPS. He still scales on attack predominantly. So strongly recommend not giving him HP mains just because of that. I would go DPS all the way, attack mains, crit damage mains. So safe to say, in terms of fighters, generally speaking, all the rules that we spoke about uh, as as mages and, and marksmen apply to them as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I would say so. Perfect. Perfect. Well, hey, I, I I don't want to get into all of the sets because we'd be here for another three hours, but I'd love to have you back on and talk about like the type of sets and how we should prioritize those. Yeah, so guys, we'll get into the actual gear set recommendations, but suffice it to say, Bucket, does it, uh, in the early game, all the stat priorities should take precedent over making sure that you have gear sets on is that is that correct yeah okay. absolutely that's definitely cool. well worth mentioning I've, I've done a few takeovers and by and large the biggest issue is people focusing sets over stats absolutely as ash says go for stats you really really need to get your stats up all right well hey let's go have a chat on your channel i will link that for you guys watching uh obviously based on i i, I love this video so thank you so much for coming on but based on the knowledge <laughs> that my bucket has you guys uh you know you're missing out if you don't subscribe to his uh, his youtube channel so thanks again for coming on and we'll see you over there thanks as always take care